Hi, Movie Chronicles here. Today, I am going to explain a Japanese action thriller film called Battle Royale. The film begins with the Japanese government passing the BR Act to reduce juvenile delinquency because students are demotivated to study and have started engaging in criminal activities. According to this act, the government selects high school students and allows them to engage in a battle to the death within a specific area. The last person standing wins the game. The first scene begins with the media figuring out who won last year's battle. The winner is a girl who is transported by the armies. In the following scene, a high school student, Shuya, mentions his mother abandoned him when he was a child, and his father committed suicide. One day, Shuya's best friend, Nobu, wounds the teacher, Katano, with a knife, and as a result, the teacher resigns. Shuya's class goes on a field trip after a year. On the bus, a student named Megumi persuades her best friend, Noriko, to offer Shuya her handmade cookies. Shuya is too embarrassed to accept it, so she gives it to Nobu. A few moments later, their bus enters a dark tunnel. Shuya awakens to find all of his friends and teacher are asleep. He also observes the bus driver and conductress wearing gas masks. When the conductress notices Shuya is awake, she approaches him and knocks him out. After some time, all students regain consciousness and find themselves in a dark room with metal collars around their necks. They also notice two identified students, Kawada and Kiriyama. Meanwhile, they see a helicopter land, along with a large army. Kitano exits the helicopter and walks towards the students. The students are taken aback to see their resigned teacher. Kitano then begins explaining the BR Act, telling them they must kill each other until only one of them is alive. The class does not believe him, so he shows the dead body of their new teacher, claiming that he violated the BR Act. All of the students are terrified after witnessing this, Kitano shows a video that explains the battle royale rules. According to the video, they are on a remote island with a radius of 10 kilometers. All of the students become terrified and attempt to flee. However, the army fires warning shots, forcing everyone to remain in their seats. Kitano then resumes the video. According to the video, the area contains a danger zone, and if anyone remains in that zone, their neck collar will explode. The video also shows the collar can detect the student's locations, and if any of them attempt to act smartly, it'll explode. Nobu becomes angry and yells at Katano, to which he pulls out a remote and activates Nobu's collar. The collar begins to beep, and it soon explodes, killing Nobu. The video explains that if there is more than one survivor at the end, all of the collars will automatically explode, leaving no winners. Following that, the soldier brings everyone's bags, which contain food water, a map, and random weapons. After giving each student a bag, the students are asked to exit the building one by one. When Shuya is summoned, he whispers to Noriko that he'll wait for her. Shuya notices his classmate, Tendo, who has an arrow stuck in her neck, killing her. Shuya comes across another classmate named Yoshio, who is throwing arrows, and in return, Shuya throws a torch in Yoshio's face and flees with Noriko. Yoshio falls and drops his crossbow, in fear, Another student, Kazushi, discovers the crossbow and pulls the trigger on Yoshio. Shuya and Noriko arrive at a cave, and inside their bag, they discover a shield and binoculars as their weapons. Shuya wonders about their other classmates, but Noriko informs him that she doesn't trust anyone. A group of students mock Kiriyama in the following scene. One of the students points the gun at him, but Kiriyama quickly steals the gun and shoots everyone. On the other hand, two of the students, Sakura and Kazuhiko do not want to be part of the game, so they commit suicide by jumping off the cliff. Mitsuko approaches Megumi, hiding in one of the rooms and begins attacking her. Mitsuko then murders Megumi by severing her neck with a sickle. The following morning, Kitano announced the list of the deceased students in the danger zones. Noriko is devastated to learn of Megumi's death. Shuya then instructs Noriko to keep moving to avoid the danger zone. On their way, one of their friends, Oki, attacks them. Shuya begins to fight him back, and Oki dies after accidentally plunging the hatchet into his head. Shuya panics in fear and guilt when he sees this. Meanwhile, another classmate named Motobushi attacks them, but Kawada arrives and shoots Motobushi to death. Kawada questions them about their weapons while holding them at gunpoint. When Kawada realizes they don't have any dangerous weapons, he holds his gun down. Following that, the three of them hear the voices of the two girls. 
who invite everyone to come together and brainstorm alternative solutions. Noriko uses the binoculars to locate Yumiko and Yukiko on the hill. Shuya decides to help them, but Kawada stops him, warning him about the dangers awaiting him outside. A few moments later, Kiriyama approaches the two girls and shoots them to death. Shuya is disappointed and irritated with his classmates after witnessing them fighting. On the other hand, Mitsuko attempts to flee to a shed, but Hirono holds her at gunpoint. Hirono snatches the sickle from her grasp and accuses her of murdering Megumi. Mitsuko then tricks her and electrocutes her with Megumi's stun gun. After that, Mitsuko steals Hirono's gun and shoots her. Meanwhile, Shuya and Noriko travel to another safe location, but Noriko collapses due to fever. Shuya transports her to a nearby clinic, but he discovers Kawada inside the clinic. Kawada assists them and provides Noriko with medicine. In the following scene, Sugimura encounters his classmates Mamura, Sido, and Ijima, attempting to repair Mamura's laptop in a building. Mamura informs him they are trying to find a way to escape. Before departing, Mamura requests that Sugimura notify Shua of their location if Sugimura finds him. Mamura notices their collar contains a microphone through which Katano can hear everything. Chigusa, on the other hand, jogs while picturing Sugimura behind her. Naida, a classmate, approaches her soon after. Naida begs her to stay with him, but Chigusa is uninterested. Naida fires the crossbow at her, slicing her cheeks when she refuses. Chigusa, enraged, pulls out her knife and murders him, but she manages to escape. However, one of the bullets strikes her stomach, causing her to collapse on a dam. Simultaneously, Sugimura locates her and allows her to rest on his shoulder. Chigusa warms him about Mitsuko and dies shortly after confessing her feelings for him. In the next scene, Katano announces the list of deaths and expresses his disappointment at the slow rate of death. As a result, he increases the number of danger zones in the game. In the same evening, Shuya, Noriko, and Kawada are having dinner when Noriko thanks Kawada for her assistance. Kawada then reveals that he survived the previous battle royale. Kawada mentions that he and his girlfriend, Keiko, were the only two survivors. When their collars beeped, Keiko shot him, and in response, he shot Keiko, severely injuring her. Before dying, Keiko smiled and thanked him. He says that he's here to understand Keiko's final words. Kawada then tells them that he knows how to get off the island, but he doesn't reveal it. However, he gives them his gun as a sign of friendship. Meanwhile, they can hear gunshots coming from outside. Kawada informs them it is Kiriyama who agrees to participate in the battle. Kawada then instructs them to meet at a specific location if they split up. Outside, Kiriyama pursues Oda, who arrives at the clinic after a few moments. Kiriyama shoots Oda, but Oda survives because he is wearing a bulletproof vest. However, Kiriyama reappears from behind and uses his sword to sever Oda's head. Simultaneously, Kiriyama hears a noise from the clinic and throws Oda's head from the window with a grenade. The three of them manage to avoid being blown by the grenade. Shuya rushes out to lead Kiriyama. While Shuya is fleeing, Sugimara hears gunshots and runs towards it. Shuya dives into the water to save his life. Sugimara also fights Kiriyama and dives in water after Shuya. On the other hand, Seto and Ijima bring all of the ingredients at Mamura's request. Mamura covers his collar and reveals his plan to demolish the BR system. The following day, Shuya awakens in the lighthouse where Atsumi tells him about Sugimura brought him there. Atsumi informs him of the death reports. She also tells him about Mamura and his other friends waiting for him. Atsumi further asks him to stay until he recovers. Sakaki, who witnessed Oki and Shuya's fight, considers killing Shuya because she believes Shuya murdered Oki. Sakaki then decides to poison the dish and serve it to Shuya. Meanwhile, another friend arrives and takes the dish prepared for Shuya. She consumed the tainted meal and perishes on the spot. Noda becomes terrified and points a gun at them, demanding to know who did it. The girls blame each other and, as a result, shoot each other. Sakaki is the only one left who approaches Shuya and apologizes. She then scales the tower and jumps from the top, committing suicide. In the following scene, Noriko fantasizes about eating ice cream with Katano. She wakes up and tells Kawada about her dream. She also wonders how Shuya is doing. Shuya, on the other hand, is struggling to walk through the woods while remembering his father and Nobu. 
it begins to rain, and Noriko rushes outside to find Shuya. She comes across Mitsuko, who points a gun at her on her way. Mitsuko, on the other hand, flees as Kitano approaches. Shuya arrives soon after, and collapses from tiredness. Kitano walks away, handing Noriko his umbrella. On the other hand, Sugimura finds Kotohiki at the warehouse, but Kotohiki shoots him without knowing his intentions. Sugimura confesses his love for her before dying, and asks her to flee because someone will arrive after hearing the gunshots. When Kotohiki notices this, he stays and sobs in guilt. Suddenly, Mitsuki appears and shoots her to death. Kiriyama arrives on the scene, and kills Matsuki as soon as she kills Kotohiki. Shuya learns of Sugimura's death in the evening and directs Noriko and Kawada to Mamura. Mamura successfully hacks the BR system at the building while Seto and Ijima prepare the bomb. The army is perplexed, but Katano shuts down the system and requests that it be restarted. Mamura, Seto, and Ijima plant the bomb on the bus, but Kiriyama arrives and begins firing. He assassinates Seto and Ijima, but before he can assassinate Mamura, Mamura detonates the bomb as a suicide attack. At the same time, Shuya, Noriko, and Kawada arrive at the location and see Kiriyama walking out of the fire. But Kiriyama doesn't approach them. Kawada pursues Kiriyama, and when Kiriyama hears him, he shoots blindly, striking Kawada's shoulders. Kiriyama appears to be blind because of the explosion. Kawada then fires a bullet into Kiriyama's collar, causing it to explode. There are only three of them left in the game. Shuya, Noriko, and Kawada walk towards the seashore, and Kawada points the gun at the two of them. He admits that he's only faking to be by their side. Katano soon hears gunshots and declares that the operation is over. Following this, the entire army departs, leaving Katano alone. Kawada eventually arrives and sits with Katano. Katano discovers that his collar is no longer functional. Katano accuses him of cheating and points the gun at him, but Shuya and Noriko enter the room simultaneously. Katano, on the other hand, isn't surprised to see them. He displays his painting of Noriko as a survivor. Katano then requests Noriko to shoot him, but instead, Shuyo shoots. Katano reveals that his gun is just a toy before dying. Following that, a phone rings, and to their surprise, Katano gets up and answers it. He shoots his phone after arguing with his daughter on the phone. He dies after eating the last piece of cookie. The three of them then board a boat and depart from the island. Before dying, Kawada tells them that he has finally understood Keiko's final words. Finally, he expresses his gratitude for having found a true friend. After arriving in the city, the two are determined to survive, even running for the rest of their lives. And here is where the movie ends. For more unique and fascinating movies that you may not even have heard about, click on the videos on your screen. Also, do subscribe, like, and comment. Your one act will make a huge difference to us.